the only English speaker, uh, not because I want to flex my English, but because German is so schwierig, Leute. <laughs> so, as you probably already understand, I'm not German. I come from Italy, and my mom comes from Salerno, and my dad comes from Friuli. They both met in Bassano del Grappa, where I was born. <laughs> and yes, it's where Grappa comes from. <laughs> Who likes, likes Grappa? Ooh. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> anyway, apparently all my grandparents liked it, so they all moved to Bassano. My dad moved to Bassano when he was three, and he's an interesting person, a little bit weird. I mean, look at the attitude. <laughs> and he's an electrotechnical engineer. And I remember when I was a child, he was always fixing this weird, uh, tiny green city. And of course, as a child, I just started asking a lot of questions. And always like, what's this, what's that? Uh, he didn't have much patience, actually not at all. Uh, so the only thing I got is that there is this thing called electricity <laughs> that apparently it's what allows him to make phone calls. And yes, I'm old enough to have seen this. <laughs> and it was thanks to electricity that I could watch Dragon Ball. <laughs> Who watched Dragon Ball? <laughs> okay, we can be friends. He, my dad told me that electricity is what makes lightnings. And I thought it was so fascinating that we can actually control something so powerful to watch Dragon Ball. <laughs> so I eventually learned that electricity is made up by electrons and all this great stuff. But the only important thing is that electrons make everything possible. Even though right now you don't feel it, you have in your body electrons that are moving, are constantly shared, are constantly transferred, are constantly rearranged to form new molecules. So electrons moving, our makes the circle of life go on. My dad did not explain this way. He just said, you don't understand at school. <laughs> the problem was that school was damn boring and overcomplicated. I'll give you an example. So this is how they usually explain what a battery is. And it almost goes like this. A battery is formed by two electrodes, usually two metals, immersed in an electrolyte. At the left side, you have the anode, also known as the negative electrode, in which the oxidation occurs because its potential is lower. At the right side, you have the positive electrode, also known as the cathode, in which the reduction occurs because its potential is higher. You have the spontaneous flow of electricity from the negative electrode to the positive electrode in a galvanic cell, and the non-spontaneous flow of electrons from the positive to the negative side in an electrolytic cell. <laughs> Who did not understand anything of what I just said? <laughs> oh, we have some tiny scientists in here. <laughs> anyway, let me show you how I wished they explained it. Imagine you are at a party, and you have two floors. In one floor, you have you are the uh, resting floor. The other floor is the dancing floor. You have electrons, and when we are playing the music, electrons, it's their nature to start dancing. So what do they do? We play the music, and they all start going one by one to the dancing floor. And at the dancing floor, they start moving, they start sweating, they give up all their energy. And that energy is the light you see on your phones. So when you're using your phone, you're actually playing the music mainly for social media, unfortunately. But after five hours of Instagram, what do you do? You plug in your phone, right? You say, well, well job done. Well job, guys. So you plug in, and when you plug in your phone, you're recharging, you're politely telling to your electrons, okay, go take a rest. So we call the resting floor the negative one, because it's the one that has, let's say, lower energy because everybody all is chilling, electrons are chilling. And we call the uh, dancing floor the positive uh, uh, electrode, because it's where you know, the energy is higher, electrons are uh, dancing, etc. You, but you can call up and down, okay? We just decided to name it um, positive and negative. So when you are discharging the battery, 
the negative electrode is always the anode. When you are in the uh, positive electrode, it's the cathode. So when you have electrons that are going away from the floor, we say an oxidation is occurring. You can remember it with the acronym LEO, so loss of electrons equals oxidation. When you have electrons going uh, towards the floor, we say a reduction is occurring. You can remember with the acronym was GEAR, or GERM, you name it. Gain of electrons equals reduction. There's a better way you can remember this. So think about the anode as a lion, and electrons are scared from a lion, so they run away. <laughs> Where do they go? <coughs> they go seeking for help to the German one. <laughs> While recharging, just the opposite happens. <laughs> but sometimes, unfortunately, the electrons, they fall, they get injured, and so those electrons that are getting injured, uh, they cannot dance anymore. And this is what we call capacity loss. So for example, instead of uh, watching five hours of Instagram, you just watch five minutes of Instagram. A tragedy, right? Don't worry. This is where I step in. <laughs> So my job is to try to understand how to prevent electrons from getting injured and what can we do. I don't do that for all the batteries, they don't pay me that much. I do for one battery in particular, which is called zinc ion battery. In this battery, the negative electrode is made of zinc. And the dancing electron is a special one. Who recognizes this gel? Okay, good. Just for your information, it was called Expedit before 2013, and after 2013 it was, it's called Calax. Apparently it's more eco-friendly. Anyway, the structure of this uh, positive electrode, it's, it has the same structure, and we call it Prussian blue analogs, because it comes from Prussian blue. And it was the color that was used for a lot of paintings, a lot of stuff. And this is actually the real structure, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna stick to Calax, so you're welcome. <laughs> So for each electron in this battery, we have a dog, and dogs want to follow their owner. So when we are discharging, the dog wants to follow the electron. So where do they go? They go into Calax. When we are recharging, the electrons are moving away, and the dogs, they want to follow there. So they're going outside Calax. Of course, we don't use the dogs in the battery, but this is an uh, analogy for the ions, the zinc ions, hence the name zinc ion battery. And this in and out process is very, very important. It's the same process that happens also in the, uh, the battery of your phone. Just in your phone, you have different ions, you have different dots, <laughs> and a different shelf, okay? But this in and out process, okay, the, the term is just too easy, okay? We are scientists. We want people to feel stupid, right? So we're gonna call it interpolation. When they get in, and deinterpolation when they get out. Why is this battery so cool? Well, first, it's cheap. Second, it's safe. And it's made by zinc, it's made by iron, and it's made by water. All elements that you can find everywhere, even in your bodies. Unlike lithium ion batteries that are actually very, very expensive and dangerous and toxic, the zinc ion batteries, it's actually eco friendly. Worst case scenario, if it breaks, it's going to really assault your water. Unlike Lithium ion batteries, worst case scenario, it's really bad. Unfortunately, this kind of batteries it's too heavy, so we cannot use it for phones or cars, but we can use it for storing energy from wind and sun. Okay. <laughs> the main problem is that right now we are still too independent on, from fossil fuels. Why? Because wind and sun are not always there. So we need something so with that we can store the energy when the wind is blowing and the sun is shining. So that we can use that same energy when there is no wind and no sun. And the zinc ion batteries does precisely that. And to build, to become independent from fossil fuels, we need big renewable power plants. So we need a lot of batteries. And this is why zinc ion batteries, since they're cheap, they're safe, they're eco-friendly, they can really give us the possibility to finally stop using fossil fuels and start e healing this beautiful planet so that everybody can keep dancing. Thank you very much.